Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Golko, Golkov Igor in the 3-minute pool on ICC. So, I often use Knight F3 as a transpositional device, and here we have transposed into a King's Indian. If he plays E5, I might go in for the exchange variation, maybe. Okay, I'll just castle, and he has an open invitation to go into a Meroxy bind now. And usually they take on d4 and then play bishop c6. This tends to get pretty strategic. The, uh, the main ideas of this system are pretty well worked out for both sides. Basically, white does not want to exchange the dark square bishops because this is my good bishop, so I don't want to allow him to take on d4. And this plan of going rook a, b1, I believe the move is rook f, c1 now, and trying to go a3 and then eventually b4. This is the main idea. Um, I always forget what to do here. I think it's rook c2 is what, what I should do. Yeah, and then queen back to that square. I'm going to play bishop f1. Eventually I would like to play a3 and b4, but I'm just not totally comfortable doing it right now. Maybe now I'll do it. I can try to maneuver around and not play it for a while, but it needs to be played eventually, so if I want to make any progress. Okay, so I'll go here. And I'm going to avoid the knight trade. I'm not going to trade. I'm going to go knight e2. So this knight is potentially kind of a weak piece over here. The reason why they play h5 is so they can go king here and then bishop h6. b5 is pretty aggressive. I don't know about that move. This is a fast game though, so i got to make quicker decisions. Let's just go here because I'm threatening his bishop, and if he takes on d4, I'm more than happy to accept his dark square bishop. Hmm. So take, he takes... Uh, Maybe rook takes. Yeah, that seems okay. Let's do that. I just want to make sure I'm not running afoul of any tactics with knight c3. I don't think I am, though. Now I have a pass b-pawn. If knight c3, I just can play rook c1. I think it's no problem. There's no rook a2. There's no knight e2. If rook c8, I wonder if I can just take on c3. I probably can, yeah. I don't think knight c3 was a good move. He can support it with rook a3, but my b-pawn is going. Maybe I should play the bishop back to f1 first, though. I'm not sure. Or bishop d4. Let's go bishop back to f1. It's kind of vulnerable there. Queen there, okay. Let's go b5. Because if he takes it, I have rook b1. Mm -hmm. Let's just go here and see what he does about that. If rook a3, I wonder if queen b2 is an option. It looks completely bizarre, but I think it might work. Let's go back for a second, just check his intentions. Because now I can play maybe b6. Okay, let's go for it. If he sacks the exchange, um, I have an option of taking on c3 or taking his rook. Okay, S somehow looks suspicious for him. Maybe not though, because he's threatening my bishop. Okay, what about this move? Maybe knight c5 then. Mm, I'm going to risk it. Oh, he can just take. Duh. He could take and guard c8. Alright, let's do this. And b7. Check. I'm hoping my, my pawn actually turns out to do something. It might not, though. It might just be kind of useless. It's a weird position. Let's go f4. We're both going to have to start playing quicker now. e5. I'm trying to lock his bishop out, not let it do anything useful. Okay, let's go here. Not getting back rank checkmated, at least for the moment. 
Hmm. We'll attack him on uh, f7. Also, maybe I have a chance to bring my bishop back, actually. Okay, now I can go here. Huh, huh, huh. Tricky, tricky. Oh, he's threatening mate. Yeah, I didn't see that. Ah, uh, I think I'm dead. Yeah, I'm gonna resign. Hmm, that was a battle of uh, opposite colored bishops at the end. Huh. Yeah, that got tactical. I could have sworn in this position earlier I had the upper hand, but let's go back and take a look. So c5 is um, a way to avoid the mainline theory with e5. And then white can either do what I did, like allow the capture to happen on d4, or push d5, just go pass. So I played one of the main lines. And black is a little bit cramped, so it's in their best interest to trade a set of minor pieces like he did. Knight takes d4, and then bishop c6. Uh, f3, knight d7, or actually, sorry, he played a5 first. This is a good move to stake out territory on the queen side. Stops me from playing b4, which I might want to play b4, b5, cramp his bishop. So b3, just so he can't go a4. Also stabilizes my c4 pawn a little bit. And big theme of this line, white does not want to trade dark square bishops. If you do this, black is at least equal, probably better, because they just enjoy the uh, better minor piece situation. So that's why I wanted to retreat my bishop. This is all theory. Here, rook a b1. So getting out of the gaze of this bishop and trying to protect b3 so that when I play a3, this is actually covered. So here, and now rook fc1. This move looks awkward, but it makes way for his rook to come over to c8. So rook fc8. And then the queen can seamlessly come back to uh, d8 later. Played rook c2. So um, common tactical mistake here would be a3 being in a hurry to play b4, and it allows this move. And uh, he is allowing his own queen to be captured, but he's threatening mine as well. So that would not be good. And the queen defends the uh, knight on b3, so rook takes b3 doesn't work. So rook c2, on the other hand, now a3 is a threat, because if knight takes b3, um, take on b6, and then, is that right? Knight takes b3, take on b6, he takes d2, c3, there might be still be a weakness. I'm actually not sure if uh, a3 is a threat yet, if black plays some neutral move. Let's turn on the engine just to verify. Let's say black plays like h5, I don't know. Can black do this? Well, this, this works out in black's favor, but apparently knight d5 is a good move. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> Knight d5, bishop takes, e takes. This is weird. And if knight takes d2, I assume rook takes b6. And the knight is trapped. Okay, so in that case, just let me verify a3. Okay, a3 is definitely bad because of that. And I don't think this crazy knight d5 move is going to do too much this time. Take, e takes, and a4. Uh-huh. So white... Uh, is not allowed to get this in, as in the previous line. A4 can be played, and somehow <laughs> black's still better with the extra pawn. Okay, that's tricky. It's been a long time since I've even thought about that, because I haven't played this line in ages. But, um, yeah, rook c2. Sometimes they do play queen b4. On queen b4, I think queen c1 is the best move, hiding the queens from the juxtaposition. So he played queen back to d8. I played bishop f1. I could play a3 directly, but I think bishop f1 is like a useful move. And then a3, yep, h5, and as I said, the plan for him is to go, if he's allowed, king h7 and bishop h6, trying to seek that dark square bishop trade again. So white has to uh, hurry with the counterplay. Maybe I should have gone to d5 now. I feel good about my decision to avoid the queen trade, but maybe knight d5 is better than knight d2, I don't know. But then again, this, this b5 move did not look correct. Here, take, take, take. Maybe it's not so bad, though. Computer gives an advantage to white, but this is still a fairly volatile position. Rook c1. I couldn't figure out how to capitalize on this rook guarding the knight. It seemed tenuous, but I couldn't quite pinpoint 
the weakness in the setup. Bishop f1 is weak, huh? I should just push the b-pawn right away. Okay. I was wary of my bishop being undefended out here, but that has certain advantages. Mainly, he can't play rook b3 is the advantage. So let's say he had gone here, b6. This is pretty similar except to a, similar to the game, except that he has less play. Yeah, and my bishop does a good job protecting this pawn. I would gladly take this over the position I have in the game. The game, I kind of stalled for a move. He went here. b5 is still interesting. Because I was thinking if he takes queen b... F wait. Was I thinking queen b4? Apparently not, because it drops that. Oh yeah, rook b1 pinning. Yeah, that's what I was intending. So, can't take it right away. He plays rook b3. I went here. Rook back. Just repeated because I didn't want to spend too much time. But yeah, b6 again would have been good. Now b6. I probably played it at a poor time, though, when his rook is behind the pawn. Definitely would have been better to play it when his rook was on a3. Knight a4. And I tried for this. Um, right after I had played this move, I thought he could actually just take here because he guards c8. And if I take, he can take with the queen with check. check, and I lose. My bishop is lost. So he can do that. He played this instead. Take, take, b7. And it looks like this pawn will always be imposing, but the effect of it is my bishop is on a horrible square on a6. And unless I get something to c8 asap, I could definitely see why black is just better here. I mean, my dark squares are plenty weak, too. You can see I have these pawns on light squares, and I'm almost playing down a bishop if it hangs out there Check. indefinitely. Oh, I had queen takes d4. Oops. Check. That was an easy tactic I should have seen. Yep, missed that. <laughs> I played king h1. Uh, he had bishop e3 here. Okay. Well, I guess that doesn't technically win. I can play queen c2 or queen d1. Doesn't technically win the exchange. But missing queen takes d4 was pretty brutal. Now he had more time, and my position seemed to be getting worse every move. I felt like I was under pressure. Now I had this move, really? Wow. Take and then check, check here. And then win his rook, and he probably can't take here because I queen, I'm guessing. Whoops. Like, say, I don't know, king h7, take. If he takes here, I can queen because my bishop guards f1. There's no back rank checkmate. And the queen guards c1. Ouch. So, some things were missed. Let's put it that way. <laughs> this move felt very suspicious. Maybe I should have gone queen f5. Oh, totally. It's so, it's so easy to see in analysis. I know the computer said queen f5. I didn't see that. I swear, I, would, I didn't look at this right now. Just... Looking at it again with fresh eyes, like queen f5 just seems so obvious. And if he takes, at the very least, check. I have checks and apparently a forced mate. How does that work? King f8? Check. check. Huh. Because if king here, I can return the bishop to d3. And I'm threatening uh, queen h7, queen h8, or the old bishop h7, king h8, bishop g6, king g8, queen h7, queen takes f7, mate. Two deviations of that. It's just hard. It's hard with this amount of time. He's pressuring on the clock. This is this game was very similar to my previous game that I posted yesterday. Five-minute game. Great position. Spoiled in time. <laughs> it's part of the game, though. Yeah, here I didn't want to trade because I thought that would seal my fate, and it's very easy for him to defend b8. So I tried to create threats against his king. I did see that he had e6. I thought he was going to play that move because the pawn is untouchable Checkmate. due to mate on g2. So that would have been strong. And if I check on d7, he easily escapes, like king h6 or something. So he did this anyways. Yeah, h3 doesn't help my cause. That just further weakens the dark squares, which led to my demise. But the position is very tough. b8 bishop? Really, engine? Are you just trolling me right now? <laughs> like, promote to a bishop. Maybe he won't take it. <laughs> I went here, and yeah, bishop e5 is over. There's incoming mate on h2 that will, I can only delay for a few moves. Yeah, interesting game. Uh, my big opportunity I missed was definitely missing um, 
queen takes d4 right here. That would have just been uh, an easy win right there. Uh, so that's kind of a shame. And also, I don't think I played the middle game. I learned some things about the middle game in this one. Um, like maybe maybe I'll play knight d5 next time rather than going to e2. But e2 it does have some merit. I mean, I kind of like the position I got. And I should be quicker to push the B pawn. This is White's big trump. I should be quicker to push it. I shouldn't have been uh, worried about playing bishop f1 and playing prophylactically to defend a piece that isn't attacked yet. So all in all, very interesting game. Hope you guys picked up a few things about uh, the Meroxy from that one. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz game. Talk to you guys later. Bye.